today we're gonna look at a really interesting limit that has some hidden geometry that we will uncover. So the limit that we'd like to evaluate is the limit as n goes to infinity of two to the n times the square root of two minus the square root of two plus the square root of two all on and on and on until we end with a final square root of two where all of those square roots are nested and there are n total twos. And so first we'd like to get a handle of what's going on here and I think maybe the easiest way to do that is to split off the portion that does not have the minus sign. And that's the subject of this first lemma. So for all n bigger than or equal to one, two times the cosine of pi over two to the n is in fact equal to this nested sum of square roots of two. And in order to prove this, we're gonna use the half angle formula for cosine. That says that two times cosine of theta over two is the square root of two plus two cosine theta. And now uh, we'll use induction. So anytime you're doing an inductive proof, you need to start with a base case. And so generally the base case is like the smallest possible value of n. Let's recall we're doing this over here. So I guess n equals one would be the smallest possible value of n, but that's not super interesting. That gives us pi over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero. That gives us zero total twos here. So that means that's just the sum of zero objects or zero. So I guess that works out. But that being said, let's do a more interesting base case, n equals two. Okay, and now let's notice that two times the cosine of pi over two squared is four is equal to the square root of two. But that totally works because we've got a single square root of two there. So here we're all set. This rule over here is satisfied for our base case. And now we move on to the induction step. The induction step always starts with the induction hypothesis. So what we'll do is suppose for some k bigger than or equal to two, we have, well, the formula holds. So in other words, two times the cosine of pi over two to the k is equal to the square root of two plus the square root of two, all of these nested square roots of two where, how many of them do we have? We have exactly k minus one of them. Okay, and then that's the induction hypothesis. Next, we move on to the next case. So now let's consider this. It will be two times the cosine of pi over two to the k plus one. And now we'll use the fact that two to the k plus one in the denominator is the same thing as having something like pi over two to the k times one half, meaning that we can use this half angle identity. Okay, so this is gonna end up being the square root of two plus two times the cosine of pi over two to the k. Again, using this half angle identity. But check it out, that's exactly what we want. All we have to do is insert this, let's maybe color code this, we'll insert this orange boxed object into this orange boxed spot. And that'll give us the square root of two plus the square root of two, on and on and on, ending at the square root of two. Where now we have k minus one square roots of two right here, and then we've got one right here, so in total, we have k square roots of two. But k is the same thing as k plus one minus one, so we're good to go there. Okay, so that's the proof of this lemma. Now let's see how that relates to our setup. So now we're ready to apply this lemma involving the cosine function to our setup. So let's see what that'll leave us with. So now we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity. We still have two to the n. Now we have the square root of two minus all of this stuff on the right hand side, but I can rewrite that as two times the cosine of pi over two to the n. So we're left with something like that. 
Okay, so, but now the trick will be to not only factor a two out of this, but we're actually gonna factor a four out of this whole thing. So what will that leave us with? We'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. We'll have two to the n plus one now, but then factoring a four out will leave us with one minus cosine of pi over two to the n all over two. But now we've got something that looks like another trig identity on the board. So this thing that I'm boxing in yellow is in fact equal to the sine of pi over two to the n plus one, like that. Okay, so that means we can make this simplification to the limit as n goes to infinity of two to the n plus one times sine of pi over two to the n plus one. And now I'm actually gonna make a change of variables here. Let's change my variables as follows. Let's set x equal to one over two to the n plus one. And let's notice as n goes to infinity, we have x go to zero from above. And then what does that turn this limit into? Well, let's be really careful about all of the places that we have to replace our powers of two with x's, and we'll see that we get the limit as x goes to zero from above of the sine of pi times x over x. But now, that has a well-known identity, and what is that well-known identity? Well, that should be equal to just pi, but we can get there also by L'Hopital's rule if we wanted to. So applying L'Hopital's rule to this, that gives us the limit as x goes to zero from above of pi times the cosine pi x equals pi. Okay, so that means the final value for our limit here is pi. Well, we just evaluated our limit, but we didn't really uncover any of the geometry, so we'll end the video by talking about the underlying geometry of this situation. Okay, so we just got done showing that our goal limit is equal to pi. And we did by writing this in the form limit as n goes to infinity of two to the n plus one times sine of pi over two to the n plus one. But I'd like to take another look at this more geometrically. So let's inscribe a regular two to the n plus one gone inside of a circle. And now let's look at this little sector of that two to the n plus one gone. So this entire angle right here, maybe I'll shade it in blue, will be pi over two to the n. That's because we take the entire angle that makes the circle two pi and divide it by two to the n plus one. So obviously some of those twos cancel. But if we cut that in half, we get the angle pi over two to the n plus one. And then we can do some very simple trigonometry to find the length of this segment right here. And this segment is one of the edges of our two to the n plus one gone. And we do that using the fact that, which I haven't written down yet, that this is a circle with a radius of one half and thus a diameter of one. Okay, but that means that the side length here can be calculated to be sine of pi over two to the n plus one. So we've got a two to the n plus one gone that has that as its side length. So that means our total perimeter, I'll maybe call it p sub n, is two to the n plus one times sine of pi over two to the n plus one. But now taking the limit gives us this object, but also taking the limit should give us the circumference of a circle with diameter two times one half or one, which is equal to pi. So of course I just like sketch that result and some of the underlying calculations you would need to repeat from what we did before, like for example this one right here, but that gives a nice geometric interpretation of what we just saw and that's a good place to stop.
Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.